The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and tell, make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Discipline is the rigor or training effect of experience and adversity. So discipline is training effects. Of, of experience. It could be a good one. It could be a bad or dangerous one. But discipline is learning. Because it is training to act in accordance to some rules. Discipline is learning. He said because it is training to act in accordance with rules and regulations. It is an activity. Exercise or regiment that develops or improves. Ah, yeah, so it doesn't really destroy. And say that is why God is interested in discipline his children. So discipline improves, it is learning. In education, discipline is simply learning. But we, we learn by what we experience. And so, addition, we, we talk about the experience. We are talking about knowledge. Or practical wisdom. Gained from what one observes. What one encounters. Or what we undergo. So when we are talking about experience, we are saying that someone has observed something. He has encountered a reality. Or he has undergone some kind of experience. And so we are saying that it could be positive or negative. We learn from what we observe. We learn from what we see. What we watch. What we perceive. What we notice. This one is much more easier. It is preferred to learning through some, some rigor. And I said, I know demo. Or because of stubbornness, you go through some adversity and you come and say, Hey, come here. You and I said, Wakuma Dinti, who bet me a fight, you be more. Wabi, who said, Ah, this thing nearly killed me. And now, so, dear Fremo. Some people become an experience for people to learn, and they themselves, they die out of it, so it doesn't benefit them. It takes them to a premature grave. And then those of us who are alive, we learn that is a calamity. I pray that doesn't befall any of us. It's better to learn from observing. Seeing and watching. Seeing. Noticing. It is better than a calamity befalling you. Second Samuel chapter 11. Verse 15 through to 21. Now this is about David and Bathsheba. We for David and David and Bathsheba. And then when he decided uh, to kill the husband Uriah. 
na oye na dwen se obekum ni kunu yuria no na he actually wrote a letter through yuria himself to joab che obomodi a twere krata e de fa yuria mo ankasa ko ma joab this is how yuria died na see and this is how it was reported to David. So I read from verse 15. In it he wrote, Put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. Now, this is one of the strategies to kill leaders. Now, when the leader is always put in front, at where the battle is fiercest. So those who are supposed to support the leader, don't leave him there and withdraw. Once you withdraw, you'll be killed. Shall we bad our heads? And sometimes we make people leaders of churches, leaders of institutions, and he doesn't get support. The people just withdraw. And when you withdraw, the leader could be killed. Because you always need the support of others. No man has it all. Let us pray for our leaders at the workplace, in church, even at home. Those who are supposed to support. Should not withdraw. Don't withdraw. God, the leader can be destroyed. Shall we pray briefly for our leaders? So, so, help us, O oh God, our leaders. We pray for the President of the Republic. That our heart will be with Him, O oh God. We obey Him, O oh God, in prayer. So verse 16. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Iria at the place where he knew the strongest defenders were. Now Joab when the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Iria the Hittite died. Na kunu mu merima free edi ni yo abekoye no. Na doma wa ye David nkwa no mu bi atotoy. So now Uria is effectively there. Uria, he died. Nino so a toy. The commander in chief is going to report to David. Now we are here. No, he can so sign. No, a dim way. Ebe kwa koma David. See how he's going to redo the report. Verse eighteen. Yeah, to us when you must do what you know. Joab sent David a full account of the battle. And that was a good comment. And now you have some full account of the battle. You have some mama wakoka. He instructed the messenger, the one supposed to carry the message to the king. When you have finished giving the king this account of the battle, the king's anger may flare up and he may ask you, why did you get so close to the city to fight? Didn't you know they would shoot arrows from the walls? Didn't you know they would shoot Didn't a woman drop an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died in Tishbesh. Why na okum Yerusabed ba Abimelech and your baby anoto ayemyemo ba a free 
a boba, a free of a son, so a boma or toy, there is no. I didn't why did you get so close to the wall? And I'm if he asks you this, then say to him, Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. Now, can we eat? And you're not catching on to say, Wakua Uriah, Hittite, Nino, so at all. Seek the secrets that people have died, gone to the grave with. It's only God who knows. And he does some more nipper, a woman, Timma, what do you fear? I see so corner when you're in Kuan with him. Especially leaders. Yeah. What am I trying to bring from this? He says that when you say that the battle has been fierce and a lot of our people have died because he's giving a, 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 a detailed account. So he's saying that we went so close to the wall and then the king will say, what? Didn't you know that this thing has happened ever? And that somebody has been even been killed by a woman. And so the king is saying that, didn't you observe? Why do you go that close? And then when the king is angry, just add Uriah's matter to it, and then everything will end. Why, man, you're born in say, and you have so much so uncle country or here. And the Okuni will say, you know, our country and say, yeah. Okuna no see a day ma a straw for be a toy. Now, or Trimwa, not just a war bang, a first one. Na na bube fu sa denti na mo ben fe so ni sa so mo nim se mo ye sa da bi e mo bi toy na sa da no mpo oba bi e na to bo e ma nipa ni woyi nti o hini bu fu sa pe bo modin aka kire ni se yuri an so ato so david who said that why why this thing has happened before the david be aka should have just observed but you just had a yes matter and so we are saying that we learn from observation what has happened to someone make it an escape for you so that you don't fall into the same trap that is why Joab knew that David will be angry because this has happened before so you, de you don't have to repeat it Yes, brothers and sisters. The Bible is full of examples of how God dealt with the generation that has gone ahead of us. The Bible is all about how people experience God. And so when we have it, we only need to observe. How dealt with the, the generation that has gone ahead of us. So we can escape the pitfalls. See, when you read the Bible, the good thing is that nothing is hidden from the Bible. Okay, to the extent that when Noah, even the righteous man, got drunk, the Bible says he got drunk. Ah, Noah, yeah. And so we have an example to observe. Romans 15, verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Now, Bribiara, what tree at all? No, what tree am I in? Tread the same moon, say, young for Boisito, and the train moon and seminal moon, and a wretched tree, now you know so, and you need us. I want to repeat that. I said, me kind way view. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So sometimes you look at the endurance, other times it is an encouragement. So as you read, you wait well and say that we might have hope. Yeah, Chosem no actually, Ediabri, Bian, Wachama, and Senebe, I am so, Ebina, and in the swore, 
in Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 1 to 13 speaks about how God dealt with the Israelites in the wilderness and the Bible says for many of them God was not pleased verse 6 verse 6 now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did verse 11 and verse 12. verse 11 these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come how come that moses did not enter the promised land it is written i didn't see and moses and to me uncle how come that god destroyed some angels it is written i didn't know when you say above for nibi watch it so that is why the bible says that if god did not spare he will not and so there are always examples for us to follow we ought to observe so that we will be able to escape the pitfalls observing is discipline verse 12 says this so now let me take the 11 and add the 12 these things happen to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come so if you think you are standing firm be careful that you don't fall na yenum nyina siye na ayokoko bo amawon na watre no se afutu amayen wo wiase bre a yen ye wi anase wiase bre yi mu a ewiye atu yen yi enti de ye no se ogina ho no onhwe yi na wanhwe ase so it is an example for all of us we need to observe we need to perceive when we go to church and we are being spoken to and we are being taught we need to perceive don't just hear perceive is to draw it in draw it in and then act upon it it's one of the greatest things god has done for us as Christians is the availability of the written word. And for the sake of people who may not be able to read, he has written one also on the tablet of our hearts. In my second station, I always say that the old ladies there taught me Christianity. They taught me Christian. What? Christos. It's all ladies in the church. <laughs> when they are even praying. Sometimes I open my eyes. Me be and start making notes. <laughs> from the prayer. You, 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 you see people who are are so close to God. Talking to God. And the words that they were in you know, the church. Want I pick some of them? Today, be anami trebi. Now, when I go somewhere and they ask me to pray, I guess I recite it. Ami do baby now wakasa me mom paya ni ami ya ne se de mesu ano. But it just coming from my head. It's not like those old ladies. And sisa emrewano. Don't come to my house. Baba mi fiye. If something small. Now, what about the baby kitu ebi? But what they will say about the present? Now, so ni obe kanfa sa chedi ano ano. See that these are Christians. Umu se we num oye Christu fo. Sometimes when I close and I go to them, we start talking. One word that they will say to you. <laughs> they will just suffer. They will give you one example in the past. It is enough for you to live it for the whole year. 
They taught me Christianity. So I realized that these may not be able to read the scriptures. Understand all the Hebrews and the Greek language. And there's one written on the tablets of so the they know it just by the fear of the Lord. They know it. But you see, if the Bible is available and we can read, we should observe it. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 6. Second Peter chapter 1. From verse 1. Peter chapter 1. Verse 6. 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 Verse because it is it was their very life it was their life and then in the new testament let's pay attention to what uh, peter by the inspiration of the holy spirit is telling us this evening second peter 1 from verse 1 simon peter a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus have received a faith as precious as ours. Simon Peter and said Simon Petro, Yesu Christo Aqua Ne Sumafo the Koma Wan Wenya Jidia se Yen Dieno Yen Yan Kopongne a Jim Kwan Christo Yesu Trinimo. Now grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus Christ. Now, when you are reading scripture like this, be observing with your spirit. Now, look at this one. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Then he says that through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. What this means is that. The grace and peace will be in abundance as you know God the more. But let's go for the King James. All the years. But the King James. Now look at this. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, grace and peace be what? Multiply. Unto you. Now, listen. In mathematics, when you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. So once he says grace and peace be multiplied, what that means is that all of us have grace. And we have peace. When we accepted Christ, we, He became our peace. And that grace that saved us is still with us. But He's saying that it must be multiplied. I'm just teaching about observing. Don't just be reading the Bible as any other literature. Be paying attention. Try to read the spirit behind it. Allow God to speak to you. Whilst you sit by the scriptures. Observe what the spirit is telling you. So we have grace. We have peace. But Peter is saying that I pray that it will be multiplied. Now the big one. The reason for reading this very particular piece. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. You realize that the key interpretation is a bit different from the NIV what I read. So let's go for the King James. Now the King James. According as his divine power 
has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Said ye, Ninyan kupon fem, and wording, the nomen yina, a fat and qua, and ni unyamison pahun yina, a chayen. So God has given us all things that pertain to life, ordinary life, and that pertain to godliness, growing in the spirit. God has given us everything. Ninyan kupon, the adinina, my yang, ye fan qua, and ni yamison pahun. Verse four. Umi yu and nine. I observe verse 4. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises. Mm. So that through them, you may participate in divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world, Caused by evil design. Na se mwenye jane akono mu praya e wo wia se no ma fa yenum so enya onyanko pon so sunubi. So through the scriptures, inti onam chroni mu. His divine grace has given us everything that we need for life and for godliness. Mwenye onyanko pon adum na kasa amma yeng bribiara e fa unkwa eni nyame sompa. And he has attached it. He has attached promises to it. Or if you like, all that he has given us is in his promises, the words. And through that word, we will be able to escape the corruption in this world. Many years ago, uh, somebody gave me television. First colored TV. When I was leaving my first station. When they gave me the television, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to carry it to my next station. I wanted to watch it that night. <laughs> so when they left, I opened it. I brought the TV out of the box. I plugged it. And I tried to make sure that the pictures will come. About one hour, the features were not coming. <laughs> you just see, the features were not coming. Also, reading the manual. Reading this thing was not just... But I thought I've done all that should be done. So, I called this brother of mine. That we have to call this elder uh, to report to him that the TV is, is faulty. I know. Me catch him and say, "I say, I bought money and I should do a debate." And he catch him and say, "Because if you didn't know a debate, you know, and what touch him?" So he came and said, "Okay, what is the problem? Okay, let's follow the process." So I have done this thing, and then so he started. To buy and what case? And he yeah, you should come and say a fast solution. And I'm catching and say, my dear, may you be a and so your son shall save you. I was sitting somewhere observing. There was nothing new. None of you know my dear. All that he was doing, I've gone through that. No, you know my dear. But at a point, I folded the arms. Ah, you know, 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 one minute. <laughs> and after that one minute, if you just now and actually no and uh for me just yes ever. So all along I'm saying I didn't have the patience for that one minute. I mean to me and train Sima Bakumpu. So I thought it was sports. Didn't I miss Bia if you didn't want to touch him? You see, we need to observe everything for life and godliness. It has been given to us. We fail because we do not know the scripture and the power of God. Let us observe closely. Everything is there. Everything is there. Our prosperity is inside. There. Our our honor is inside. 
So when God called Joshua, he told him, keep this book of the law. Keep this book, but let me go back to Peter. Let's go to verse 5. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. Now, so we are we are studying the way. Teach us, I say, ye are anti. Monso, momo, modding, you know, and fun, come on now. Munchetre, mudidium, papa, and to knowledge self control. So we are trying to. Cause the television uh, to to <laughs> to produce some pictures. So he says that when you come to faith, try and add goodness. So add it. Tinyo kane says oba be tu jidia fa papa ye ekahu. And to goodness knowledge. Na enwe chino fa nimdiye ekahu. And to knowledge self control. Na enwe chino fa eni daho ekahu. Be adding. Omo di afeka. And to self control perseverance. Then we chino fa buase to ekahu. And to perseverance godliness. Na you only be kan buase to no no e nyamso pa. And to godliness mutual affection. Then we chino fa onu adon so ekahu. And to mutual affection love. Na enu mo no fa ni do ekahu. And verse eighteen. Verse eight. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you are born again, and you start adding, the Bible says, add. It means that take the initiative. God is not going to take the initiative. You. Start adding goodness. Let people know that you are born again. Then grow in the knowledge of God. Then keep adding. Keep adding. When you have this qualities in increasing measure it will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in this world in this world you will not be ineffective you can't be unproductive if you follow this formula observe so when Joshua was called, the Bible says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything written in it. And the Bible says, Then, then you will be prosperous. Unsuccessful. Then, sometimes people come to church and they say that we have stayed in this church for so many years and there's nothing in the church. As for church, there's nothing in church. But as for God, there's something in God. And he has made available his mind in the scriptures. Observe to do not yet then enumu then enumu you will be prosperous na what kind be your jojo and successful na e be see we see god for new that israel will ask for a king yeah o nyankopo no nim say israel for e be be say o hene that so he spoke about how to choose a king to bo modian no work as i kwan o be fast and what the king should do and he said your hene no e sia bon bra in deuteronomy even before they ask for a king in Samuel. So let's go to Deuteronomy 17. From verse 14. Verse 14. Deuteronomy 17 from 14. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, you, you and have taken possession of it and settled in it, and you say, let us set a king over us like all the nations around us. As a woodras, I see a radiunian copounder in my one or so fat in us. Now, what can say, Missy Messon in a senior man, a man, which I mean, who is she? I know, you know, 
that when he takes the throne, that's the king, when the king takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law. He should have a copy. Taken from that of the Levitical priests, not from anywhere, you go for the original one. It is to be with him, and he is to read it all the days of his life, so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow carefully all the words, observe all the words of the law and these decrees, even the kings. We're supposed to observe the law. So turn a him ya so na okay can we no ma on shesu obe diso na we throw on yanko pon a him funumpo necessa would di on yame ransom. And not to consider himself better than his fellow Israelites and turn from the law to the right or to the left. Na we muno se or yed your crown chain in fefono na wan mani and fi a rade kwa no ho and kobi nkum ananifa. What is the next word? Then, say Enuna. Then, Enuna. He and his descendants will reign a long time over his kingdom in Israel. Just say, I know now. Manina, I worry now. He knew me or not any Israel. Mu emanina. God looked at Eli and said, "I pledge to you that your family will be priests forever." But I changed my mind. When you come on she, Eli come no case. I mean, I'm sure we both say we both see. I be ye a software ama mi wo Israel mu and then you na na so masi samajeni. None of your family will grow to any old age. We both see a phobia and we be to me and you ni a kudu ni peni fi. Also cut short the alliance. Make sure we don't go na so. There will come a time that they will beg the priests to give them something to do for a living. A bribe be ba. Why? Because they never observed to do. Then, he and his descendants will reign a long time over his kingdom in Israel. We are because we do not know the scriptures or the power of God. Sometimes, or for some genuine reasons, some may have some argument in their spirit against what they are supposed to observe, and God may create a way to encounter them and to change them and to cause them to to be ripped in line like he did for the apostle paul i told you be a bit of better me and you know being to i want to mean you i mean and they said they are not quite it that's when you're going to pay for so i can't want back when you move it's your own send a bear will be to me a basic when you send your yes my for paul you know the entrance of his word will always bring light when you're not some move run on and bring me a mono and my hand the one he encountered paul the bible says immediately Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. Chose him to say, "Bra, on the poor, it dear she ano Saulo." Chose him to say, "Bribia, a one and niso to say entete a free go form." Something like scales. Bribia to say entete. Now he could see clearly. A free and niso go here and a free go to me. Not physically seeing, but revelationally, he now understands that Jesus is the Lord. And yes, we all who know Adiye, I want to confirm. Ne mum o nyanti asiye se fei we who know se Christo. But sometimes, if you don't want to observe and you don't have any encounter, God can take you through a tough time like He did for the prodigal son. I told you, Bia, say, "Won't you mean suyan diya wodi awo kenka ya na wushe nimu? Now, won't you mean nyesu ya unu bi free mwa? O nyame to me di wo fa kwe mbiso se ni oye obadi se phone." When your father is still alive, you don't ask for your portion of the inheritance. No. Now, what you say says, "What you say says, ya nye." But this younger son demanded of the father, please give my share. I'm sure he was disturbing the old man and he decided to split it and gave him his share. And then he, he went out and led 
a riotous life. And when everything was gone, the scripture says that when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, he's learning, but he's learning through some hard way. He could have just observed. To know that the scripture has said, this is not supposed to be done. But because he didn't have that patience, he wouldn't go by what is written down. God loved him. But he took him through the tough way. I pray that this thing will not befall anyone of us. This evening, I just want to encourage you that all that we need for life and godliness is written in the scriptures. Discipline is to learn. I want to encourage you to learn by observing. It is better. It is, it is an easier way to learn. But sometimes we have said that God can also encounter you. And other times you can go through serious adversity. You will learn. But you go through too much of tough times. I'm praying that God will help all of us. As we instill discipline in our homes. As we instill discipline in the church. We ourselves. If we judge ourselves. By observing. The law of the Lord. No one will judge us. That is how to prove a spiritual person. If you judge yourself. No one will judge you. So we are bringing this teaching on the family life to a close. I'm hoping that by this time family altars are raised in most homes. I'm believing that by this time we are giving unbelievers some reason to know that family marriage was created by God Himself. I'm believing that by this time we have understood that when marriage is bad, it is bad because of the two people involved. Not because marriage as an estate, as an institution, uh, is an evil thing. We are saying that, please, let us uphold the grace of marriage. And family line. And because of us, Many will come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Let us discipline our lives. Let us learn by observing.